in the city of Durham, North Carolina, is one of the fastest growing churches in the Triangle, New Life Christian Center. This beautiful and exciting church meets the needs of your entire family. Today, we are privileged to join Pastors Andrew and Cheryl Singletary as they present the Prevailing Word Telecast. Here's Pastor Andrew Singletary. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he's asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And then he says unto them, But whom do you say uh, that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, or the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Bojona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, uh, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say I also to you, that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail uh, against it. And then we had you the underline. Uh, upon this rock, uh, I will build uh, my church. Upon this rock, uh, you know, I will build uh, my church. And the first thing that we notice about uh, this phrase, upon this rock, uh, I will build my church, is that is written in the red in our Bibles. Isn't that right? And that's to let us know that uh, this is the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that's speaking because it's written in the red, uh, you know, uh, into our Bible. And notice now uh, that Jesus says that. Uh, he made this statement. Uh, he says that. Uh, I'm going to uh, build uh, my church. Everybody say, build my church. Uh, Jesus says that, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, build my church. And before Jesus was talking about, you know, before he got to that statement that uh, he was going to uh, build the church, first of all, he asked a couple of questions, uh, you know, to those that follow him. Amen. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, in most of my teaching, I'm always asking you uh, questions. And the reason why I do that is because I got it from Jesus. Amen. See, Jesus always asks people questions because questions can locate you. It'll let people know where you at, where you are at, amen, and I also let you know where you are at, okay, and so before Jesus got to that statement about, uh, I will build my church, uh, he says that, uh, you know, a couple of things I want to know, he said, first of all, I want to know uh, who the people on the outside say that I am, I want to know what the world thinks, what the world is thinking about, who am I? You know, and then they begin to uh, to tell Jesus, uh, you know, here's what the world thinks. Some think that, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, that you are Elijah. Some think that you are Jeremiah, uh, you know, or one of the prophets. Eh? Amen. Uh, you know, uh, Jesus was always interested in, you know, you know, what the world thinks. Amen. What the world are considering. I think that you and I as Christians, uh, you know, you ought to, uh, you know, you ought to think, you know, what do the world think about you and you and your confession that you are a Christian? You know, what does the world think about you? You know, when you tell them that, uh, you, you know, that you are a Christian, that you are a child of God, filled with the Holy Spirit of God, what do the world think about you? When they look at you, uh, you know, do they think that, you know, you say one thing and live in another? Or do they really believe the words that's coming out of your mouth that you're a born again child of God, that you are a son of God, and that you live and reside in the kingdom of God? And so Jesus says that, well, well, just who do they uh, say that I am? And then uh, they answered him. And then Jesus turned around and asked a very important question. Now that I know what the world thinks about me, I want to know who do you say that I am? You, you know, you that say you are Christians, you that say that you connected to a local church, who do you say, who, who do you say uh, that I am? And then, you know, out of, out of all of the disciples, the Bible declares that it was only one that answered up, and that was uh, Simon Peter. Uh, Peter says that, uh, you know, I know who you are. You are the Christ, uh, you know, the Son of the living God. But notice now, he was the only one that answered, but he asked the whole group of them, who do you say uh, that I am? Uh, you know, but Peter was the one that, uh, you know, you know, uh, answered up and says that, uh, you know, you are the Christ, uh, the Son of the living God. And the Bible says that, Jesus says, Blessed art thou, Simon Bojona. 
You know, uh, and he said that, and he says that thou art Peter. He says, blessed are thou, Simon Bojona. Blessed are you hearing one. You remember I told you that, uh, that name Simon Bojona, in this case right here, it's talking about the hearing one. See, he said, blessed are thou, Simon Bojona. See, he didn't say, blessed are thou, Peter. He says, blessed are thou, Simon Bojona. Why? Because now you are the hearing one. You, you, you're the only one heard from heaven. And he told him, see, you didn't get this from flesh and blood. Man didn't tell you this. A human being, you didn't get this uh, from a human being. You got this uh, from my Father, uh, which is in heaven. And so he called him uh, Simon Bojona, a hearing one. You heard from heaven. You heard God say that, I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then he says, you are Peter. First he says that, you are Simon Bojona, one that know how to hear from heaven. Then after he said that, then he turned around and said, but thou art Peter. I want you to know that you are Peter. And upon this rock, what rock? The rock of the word of God. The rock of the revelation that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. That's what I'm going to build my church on. That's what I'm going to build my people upon. Why? That I am the Christ of the living God. So I'm here today to let you know that the church should be built Upon the revelation of Jesus Christ. It shouldn't be built on the personality of a man. See? And that's how most churches are known. By the man. Craft Dollar run that church. T.D. Jakes run that church. Uh, you know. Etc. Etc. run that church. And so most of the emphasis is on man. And he says this, I'm not going to build my church on a man. I'm going to build my church on the revelation that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. I am Jesus Christ. That's what the church ought to be built on. So when you come to church, you ought to be getting the revelation of Jesus Christ and not on Andy. See? Not on my personality. You know? It should be built upon Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I didn't save you. I didn't die for you. See? And so our emphasis when we come to church, it ought to be on Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and not on the personality of a man. See? And, and that's why, that's how uh, church people get in trouble. Why? Because they build everything upon a man. And so if that man falls, or if that man uh, get in sin, and then the whole church fall apart. Why? Because it's built on a man. Instead of built on Jesus Christ. I mean, you can fall all you want to. Ain't going to make me turn my back on Jesus. It's just one more done fail. It's just one more, you know, you know, didn't walk in the Word of God. But just because, just because you fail, ain't going to make me turn my back on Jesus Christ. He didn't fail. See, and that's why, uh, you, you know, when you got it built, when you when you got your church built on your personality, then when you fail or something happened to you, then the whole church fall apart. Why? Because they ain't got no revelation that the church ain't built on the pastor. Church is built on Jesus Christ. See, and then he get to this famous statement: "I will build my church upon this rock." Everybody said Jesus says that he's going to build his church. Yeah. Now you and I already know that when he made this statement, I will build my church, we already know that at this time the church was not in existence. Is that not right? Why? Because the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ had not taken place. Isn't that right? He can't build a church until first of all he tastes death. Until he, and until he, uh, you, you know, uh, 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 arise from the dead. Until he go sit at the right hand of the Father. So he can't build the church. So when he says that, uh, you know, uh, you uh, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. We know that uh, the church uh, was not in existence at this time because he had not died yet, had not tasted of death, has not been crucified. We also know and understand when Jesus made this statement, I will build my church. He wasn't talking about building a Baptist church. Uh -huh. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Hello, I'm Pastor Andrew Singletary. I want to take this time to thank you for watching the Prevailing Word television broadcast. I do believe that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. And so I'm encouraging you to continue to watch the Prevailing Word television broadcast. By the way, if you and your family are looking for a place to come and worship around the Word of God, how about coming and check us out, New Life Christian Center. We believe that New Life Christian Center is the place to where you can get all of your needs met. And so I'm inviting you to come and join us around the Word of the Living God. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a blessed day. He wasn't talking about building no Baptist church. That comes from Maine. See? Also, when he says that, I will not, you know, uh, you know, I will build my church. He wasn't talking about building uh, a Baptist church. He was not talking about building a Pentecostal church. For all you holy folks out there, uh, you know, that go to those, uh, you know, Pentecostal church. He wasn't talking about building no church like that. See? He wasn't talking about building a Methodist church. He wasn't talking about, in fact, he wasn't talking about building any kind of denominational church at all. Listen to me and listen to me well. Denominationalism comes from man. It didn't come from God. That comes from man. And that's why you got Baptist churches. That's why you got Methodist churches. That's why you got uh, Pentecostal churches. Uh, you know, that's why you got, uh, you know, uh, you know, Church of God and, and, you know, and all them other ones I didn't call. Cause it's been based on a man. Got nothing to do. Ain't got nothing to do with the revelation that the church ought to be built upon the revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. So we build, we build our church upon that. See, you and I, uh, you know, we already found out, we already understand that when Jesus made the statement uh, that I will build my church, he wasn't talking about uh, building a building neither. Isn't that right? See, when Jesus was talking about building a church, he was talking about building, he was talking about building what? He was talking about building people. Why, Pastor? Because it's people that makes up the church. See? And so he says that, uh, you, you know, I, I'm going to build people. I'm going to build people because it's people that makes up the church. And I'm going to build these people on the revelation that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's what I ought to be building you up on. Building you up on Jesus Christ. Listen to me. He'll never fail you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You make me mad, I might leave you. I might forsake you. But I'm talking about one that'll never leave you. I'm talking about one that'll never forsake you. I'm talking about one that'll never fail in life. And that's the one I ought to be building you on. See? See? All right, and so when Jesus was talking about, he says that, uh, you, know, you know, I will build my church. And then, you know, uh, you know uh, right after that, uh, you know, uh, he made that statement. The Bible says over there, uh, you, you know, the Bible says over there uh, in Ephesians, uh, uh, in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, uh, he began to talk about, uh, you know, he says that uh, now this church or these people uh, that I'm building, you know, I'm going to give them some gifts. Isn't that right? And so the Bible says that before Jesus went to set at the right hand uh, uh, of the Father, the Bible says that uh, 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 he gave uh, some gifts uh, unto the people, unto the church uh, that he's building, Right? And then he says that, uh, uh, you, you don't have to leave because that baby is crying uh, because it ain't disturbing me. I mean, you know, you know don't leave to miss the word because the baby crying. It's okay. It's a baby. You can't help it. You know? I believe God sent you here to hear something. So it's okay. Okay? It's okay. It's okay if you walk around and, and it, you fine. Got it? Okay, so, 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 so when Jesus said, uh, you know, he says that, uh, before I go and sit at the right hand of the Father, what I'm gonna do, the people that I'm building, the church that I'm building, I'm gonna give you, uh, you know, I'm gonna give them some gifts. 
And one of the gifts uh, uh, he gave to the church is pastors. Everybody say pastors. And see, that's what I am. I'm a pastor. See? And so, and so, and so, Jesus says that, uh, you, you know, uh, I'm gonna give you, uh, you know, I'm gonna give you, uh, some pastors. And so with that thought in mind, we're on a teaching series called The Local Church and the Pastors. Amen. Say that with me. Say the local church and the pastor. Come on, say it again. Yeah, the local church and the pastor, uh, you know, is this teaching series uh, that we own. And the last time that you and I were together, uh, you know, we talked about church membership and what it means to be, uh, you know, uh, to be a member of a local church. And we found out that uh, now that you are born again and in the kingdom of God and you are a child of God, you are a son of God, you are a daughter of God, it is the will of God uh, that you join, that you connect yourself to a local church. Isn't that right? And so we talked about, uh, you know, that last week. And so today, you know, I'm going to talk about uh, the making of a better church. That's what I want to talk about today. The making of a better church. Say that with me. Say the making of a better church. Come on, say it again. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about uh, today is the making of a better church, okay? All right. Now, uh, uh, as we get into this, uh, talking about the making, uh, you, you, you know, of a better church, I'm going to say some things, I, uh, you know, I believe that I might say some things today, uh, that might, uh, you know, might move you in a different way. And I'm glad. Yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying? See, I'm glad. See, you ought to, uh, uh, you, you know, there ought to be times that, listen to me, there ought to be times uh, that, that when you come to church, you ought to get downright mad. Hey, not, not, not mad at me. Downright mad. <laughs> downright mad at the way the devil been treating you. And how the devil keep, uh, you know, keeping information uh, from you. And how the devil, uh, you know, uh, running your uh, Christian life. You ought to get mad about that. And you ought to be glad that you got a man of God that's willing to teach you the truth. See? See, because there's a lot of people, you know, all over the world today, uh, you, you know, going to places, uh, you know, that call itself a church, uh, you know. But I want you to know that every place that's got a steeple and every place that's calling themselves a church, God ain't there. Oh. I said God ain't there. See, you got to know where God is. See, God don't visit every place that's got a steeple. And that's calling its name a church. See? There are some places that got steeple and calling their name a church. God got Ichabod written upon those places. You know what Ichabod means? It means no glory there. No power there. No anointing there. No God is there. See, you can come together, you know, people can come together, uh, uh, you know, and God ain't even there. I don't ever want to go to a place, uh, you know, and call itself a church and God ain't there. Church ain't church if God ain't there. See? But when you go to them places that's based upon the personality of a man, that man is bigger than God that's in that church. In fact, I wouldn't go to a place like that if the man himself is bigger than the God that he's talking about. See, that's why the Bible says that we as preachers or you as, uh, as uh, members of the body of Christ, you shouldn't think of yourself more highly then you ought to. See? And you got some, listen to me, you got uh, some pastors, you know, with that personality. I'm bigger than God. Folk came here this morning. They ain't come here to hear from God. They came to hear me. I be the man. Well, the devil is a liar. God is the man and will always be the man. Somebody shout, God. He be, he be the man. Come on, say it again. God, say, we love you, Pastor. We love you, but you ain't the man. 
what you are, are. teaching us us. about the man man. who is. is. Tell me who he is. I think we ought to give him a praise right now. See? Yeah, I'm talking about him. I'm talking about him. Jesus! Yeah! That's who we're talking about. See? That's what we're talking about. Talking about Jesus. See? All right, and so we want to talk, uh, you know, this morning I want to talk about the making of a better church. Okay? The making of a better church. I believe that we are in a good church. Not only that, no, I don't just believe that. I, I believe and know that. That you don't you believe and know you're in a good church? But how many of you know we can make it a better church? See, so so I'm aiming to, to make uh, you you know this a better church. Okay? Alright? And so we want to talk a little bit today about the making, uh, you know, about the making uh, you know of a better church. You see? See, that baby done heard me uh, teaching this gospel and just calm right down. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, let's go to, <laughs> uh, let's go to, uh, uh, to the book of, uh, where we at anyway? Matthew. In Matthew 16? Okay, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Amen. Revelation, chapter 1. Revelation is a, a simple book, uh, you, you know, to really to understand People make it difficult uh, because, uh, you know, uh, they just don't know the, the Word of God. You know, why would God make a book so difficult we couldn't understand it? You know, well, you, what is He going to get out of that? In fact, what are we going to get out of it? You know, if the book too, I mean, it's so complicated we can't understand it, then you mean to tell me, you know, and it's how many chapters in Revelation 22? You mean 22 chapters he put in a book that is so complicated we can't understand it? See, that ain't God. <laughs> yeah, you know, 22 chapters we don't understand. You mean to tell me we don't understand 22? Them 22 chapters that we don't understand could cost our life. <laughs> so, so I know that that ain't God. Isn't that right? I say, I know that's not God. See? All right, are you in Revelation chapter 1? All right, in Revelation chapter 1, we want to look at verse number 11. Now, remember what we are teaching on. We are talking about what? Come on, everybody. What are we talking about? Yeah, that's right. All right, now look at verse 11. Uh, uh, Revelation 1 verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see right in a book, and send it to the seven churches uh, uh, which are in uh, Asia. And to Ephesus, and to Samaria, and to uh, Pergamos, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Okay? Now, 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 now on the line, uh, in verse number 11, uh, uh, seven churches uh, which are in Asia. On the line there. Seven churches uh, which are in Asia. Okay? Alright, so here we see in this verse, the first thing that we notice again is that it's written in the word in your Bible. It's written in the red in your Bible. And so here we see that Jesus Christ is speaking. Amen. See, this is the last book of the Bible and Jesus is speaking. And so here we see here that uh, uh, in this verse, Jesus is talking about uh, the seven churches in Asia Minor. This is, this is what uh, Jesus is talking about. He's talking about these seven churches here uh, in Asia uh, Minor. Okay. All right. Now. Okay. All right. Now. Uh, look up here at me. So Jesus in verse number uh, 11 is talking about uh, these seven churches in Asia Manor. Now, in chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Revelation, in chapter 2 and chapter 3 uh, of Revelation, these chapters has given us a preview of what these seven churches was like. Or we can call it a rating of what these churches was like. Did you hear what I just said? Okay, listen to me. Chapter 2 and chapter 3 is giving us a review of what these seven churches Jesus was talking about in Asia Manor. It's giving us a review of what these uh, churches were, were uh, like. Or we can say, giving us a rating 
of what these churches was like. The reason why I say giving us a rating of what these churches was like, because as a pastor, I believe that churches can be rated. Say this with me. Say, I believe that churches can be rated. Come on, say it again. Come on, one more time. Yeah, see, I believe that churches can be, uh, that can be uh, rated. Just like restaurants can be rated, just like hotels can be rated, I believe that churches can be rated. I believe that churches can be rated poorly, fair, and excellent. See, that's how I believe that church can be rated. Once again, I believe that churches uh, can be rated Poorly, a church can be rated very poorly. It can be rated fair, and a church can be rated excellent. Okay? We here at New Life Christian Center, we want our church to be rated, we want our church to be uh, rated excellent in our city. That's what we want. Our church to be rated. New Life Christian Center. We want New Life Christian Center. We want it to be rated as an excellent church in our city. We want our church to be rated in the top five churches in our city. And so therefore, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna talk about how to make, you know, we're talking about making, uh, uh, the making of a better church. I'm gonna make it personal, personal and talk about, uh, the making, uh, you know, of a better church. Making our church, New Life Christian Center, a better church. That's what we're gonna do. Amen. See, see so everything that I talk about is, it's gonna be about us talking about making New Life Christian Center, a better church, an excellent church in our city. I want, I want New Life to be rated among the top five churches in our city. Okay? Now, <clears throat> I also believe that every pastor that's viewing me uh, by the way of television, by the way of uh, uh, live stream, by the way of YouTube, by the way of Facebook Live, and you know all, all that other stuff. I believe that every pastor ought to want to have a better church. Are you looking for a church that meets the needs of your entire family? Well, if you are, New Life Christian Center is the church for you. Pastors Andrew and Cheryl Singletary personally invite you to be part of one of the fastest growing churches in the Triangle. New Life Christian Center is where we produce the Prevailing Word TV broadcast. Service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We provide children's church at our Sunday morning services. We provide ministries for women, men, singles, and teens. Come visit us at 7415 Fayetteville Road in Durham, North Carolina. For more information, visit us on the web at www.theprevailingword.org or call us at 919-405-2080. New Life Christian Center, where the Word prevails.